स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so the result is broken down into two smaller results let us say the first result by we denote by lemma 1 so the first lemma says that let us have two real numbers alpha and beta such that i have one value one number less than the other number let's say alpha is less than beta then then there exists a function there exists a function new which is second order differentiable over the entire real axis such that new is positive and well it is positive for all x inside this interval alpha comma beta and new of x is equal to 0 for all x for all x in r minus alpha comma beta right so which means all this lemma says is that for any given real interval i can always construct a second order differentiable function which is positive inside the interval and vanishes outside the interval and the proof of this lemma is straight forward by assuming the following function we assume nu is this is this form nu is x minus alpha cube beta minus x cube where x is from alpha to beta and nu is zero otherwise right okay we can see that nu is positive inside the interval so it it checks out this condition it also checks out this particular condition this construction of nu and also it we have to see whether nu is second order differentiable namely the derivative of nu exists over entire r right certainly it exists outside the interval so certainly this condition checks out or holds outside the interval alpha beta so we just need to figure out what is the first and the second derivative of this function inside the interval alpha beta right okay so as i just said nu of x has all properties satisfied properties satisfied except except perhaps except perhaps uh perhaps new is not second order differentiable well we 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 are not sure unless and until we have shown that it is second order differentiable uh differentiable uh right second order differentiable okay so let us now calculate the first and the second derivative of this function so the first derivative we can go ahead by evaluating the necessary limits we see that the limit of this function nu of x minus nu of alpha so the limit let us say limit from limit from the right divided by x minus alpha is x minus alpha cube beta minus x cube divided by x minus alpha right we see that this limit is x minus alpha square beta minus x cube right and when i take the limit limit x going to alpha plus alpha from the right i see that this goes to zero right and similarly when we take the other limit the limit from the left 
of nu of x minus nu of alpha divided by x minus alpha. I know that nu of nu of uh, uh, x from the left will be 0 via this definition of the function. right? So, I have that this is 0 minus 0 divided by x minus alpha or this is equal to 0. So, from here we conclude that nu prime at alpha exists and this is equal to 0. So, similarly we can conclude by evaluating similar limits that nu prime at at beta beta is also equal to 0. right? So, what we are trying to show is that nu is indeed differentiable up to second order at the boundary points, because in the interior nu is a polynomial. So, that it will be definitely differentiable outside the interval it is 0. So, certainly differentiable, but perhaps not at the boundary points. right? So, here we have shown that it is first order differentiable at the boundary points. So, similarly, similarly we can look at the second derivative. Let us look at the second derivative. Again we have to evaluate the right hand side limit and the left hand side limit of the following ratio nu prime x minus nu prime alpha divided by x minus alpha. right? So, this right hand side limit is the following we can easily differentiate we have already evaluated nu prime of x we can easily differentiate and evaluate this is 3 of x minus alpha square times beta minus x square. Again this particular expression follows by direct differentiation of the function. So, there is no complexity involved at all divided by x minus alpha and when we evaluate the right hand side limit we arrive at the fact that this is also equal to 0. right? And similarly we can show that the left hand side limit limit x going to alpha minus of nu prime of x minus nu prime of alpha divided by x minus alpha is also 0. And from here we can conclude that these two statement helps us to conclude that the second derivative of nu at alpha is 0. right? Okay. And finally, we can also do the same thing at x equal to beta. So, similarly we can check that the second derivative of nu at beta is also 0. Right? So, what we have is the following we see that the first derivative while going through this exercise we, we have seen that the first derivative of nu is 3 times x minus alpha square beta minus x square beta plus alpha minus 2 x where x is in alpha comma beta and it is 0 otherwise. right? And I have that nu double prime x is 6 x minus alpha beta minus x times x minus alpha square plus beta minus x square minus 3 x minus alpha beta minus x. Right? Uh, for all x inside this interval alpha beta and it is 0 otherwise. So, what this expression shows that the first and the second derivative of nu exists and hence we can conclude that nu is, is in the class of second order differentiable functions over the space of the real numbers right? and that concludes the, the proof of our first lemma. So, we have so, so essentially what we have shown is that nu is a choice of our perturbation function. right? Let us go back to the slide where we are going to use the lemma. So, this is the choice of our perturbation function. So, let us go back to slide two slides back. So, we are trying to show that this holding this integral of this quantity holding uh, well set equal to 0 implies that this function is 0. And we are showing it by a contradiction by finding a particular value of eta. 
and just now in the first result we have shown that nu satisfies all the properties of the perturbation function that will be our choice. Okay. Then the second result says the following which is actually the, the statement that we are after. So, the second result says suppose I have that the inner product of the perturbation eta with respect to g any second order differentiable function g is 0 where eta is a perturbation an arbitrary perturbation and well and I have that g is a function from x 0 to x 1 to r is a continuous function such that g is identically well again. So, what the result says is suppose the inner product is 0 for all such perturbations where g is a function which is continuous function then so not not this one then I must have that g is identically 0 g is identically 0 on the interval x 0 to x 1 right. Okay. Again the proof is very straightforward once we have shown the result in the first lemma the second result is very straightforward. So, without loss of generality we assume we assume that uh, well first of all let us the, the, the first statement of this uh, proof will will follow the fact that we, we assume that this holds right this holds, but g is non zero right and we will show some contradiction. So, to do that let us say that g is non zero for some point for some point c in the interval x 0 to x 1 and then without loss of generality let us further assume that g of c is positive right we could always assume g of c is negative does not matter. So, let us say that g of c is positive and c. So, c is a number from x 0 to x 1 then what I have is since I am given that g is continuous I know that g is a continuous function. So, since g is continuous which means that there exists a neighborhood of c inside this bigger interval where g will be positive right. So, that comes from the continuity since g is continuous on the interval x naught to x 1 right it implies there exists two numbers alpha beta right alpha beta such that such that this holds x 0 less than alpha less than c less than beta less than x 1 right and and g of x is positive for all x inside this interval alpha comma beta right. Okay. So, what we have we have done is we have found an open interval alpha beta where g is non zero. <coughs> then the moment we have a non zero function inside an in interval we can invoke our first result we can invoke our lemma 1. So, by lemma 1 it implies that there exists a function nu which is second order differentiable and nu is positive for all x inside the interval alpha beta and nu is 0 for all x from x 0 to x 1 right minus the the values inside the interval where nu is positive 
right so which means which means that nu is the set of belongs to the set of perturbation functions so my h is the set of perturbation functions right so so nu belongs to the set of perturbation functions and the inner product of nu with respect to g which is the integral from x0 to x1 nu times g dx which will be equal to the integral from alpha to beta because outside this interval nu is identically 0. So, integral from nu times g I know that that this particular integral is positive right because g is positive nu is positive. So, over this interval the integration must give a positive value and hence we have arrived at a contradiction because we have assumed that that this particular integration must be equal to 0 right. Okay. So, what what I have is let me just summarize all our results so far. So, by a by lemma 1 and 2 what I have found is if I am given that the inner product of eta with respect to E where eta is a perturbation function is 0 it implies that E is identically equal to 0 right which is our necessary necessary condition for extrema necessary condition for extrema ok. Okay, so, let us now uh, recap, let us now recap our entire discussion over the last one hour, one and a half, roughly one hour in the form of a theorem which is the most important theorem of this entire course. So, this is my summary. So, the result says that suppose I have a functional which is which is a map from the set of all second order differentiable functions to the space of all real numbers. So, this be a functional functional right of the form of the form j of y is equal to integral from x 0 to x 1 f of x comma y comma y prime d x, where where f has continuous partial partial derivatives continuous partial derivatives of second order. So, the integrand has continuous partial derivatives of second order with respect to the variables x y y prime right. And I have that x 0 is less than x 1 and further let my set S be the set of all second order differentiable functions x 0 to x 1 such that y of x 0 is y 0 and y of x 1 is y 1. So, fixed end point functions. Then the result says if y in S is an extremal is an extremal it must satisfy the equation as follows it must satisfy this particular equation which is our expression e that we have just shown earlier so del d dx del f del y prime minus del f del y equal to 0 and Again, this is the most important results which we are going to look at in more depth over the last, over the next, uh, you know, several lectures. So, so let me call this as our result four. So four says that, well, what we see is that four now is a differential constraint. So it's a second order nonlinear ODE that any smooth extremal must satisfy. Right. So, second is so, so the equation 4 is a second order nonlinear nonlinear ODE that any 
smooth extremal extremal y satisfies right and that is also the necessary condition that i just said and this is further known as the famous euler lagrange equation from now on i am going to talk about this equation and denote it by the shorthand notation el equations okay so it is the infinite dimensional note that this is the infinite dimensional analog of so infinite dimen dimensional analog of the condition grad f is equal to 0 for which was the condition for the finite dimensional case the finite dimensional calculus case right so this is just like the first derivative test in the finite dimensional case Okay. So, before we wrap up this uh, discussion, let, let me just show you the application of this particular expression, how we figure out the extremal function of any functional. So, my first example involves finding the geodesics over a plane, geodesics on a plane. Again, students please recall that geodesics on a plane will involve finding the shortest so, this particular problem has been described in the previous lecture. So, it involves finding the shortest path between the points. Let me now fix some points. Let me say that my first point x 0 y 0 is let us say for example, 0 0 and my second point x 1 y 1 let us say this is 1 1. So, I am just fixing some points randomly. right? So, we have to extremize given these fixed points we have to extremize j of y which is the functional from x 0 which is 0 to x 1 which is 1 of the total arc length of the curve which is 1 plus y prime square d x. So, this is my arc length functional. Now, so which means to find the extremum to find the extremum i have to satisfy the euler lagrange equation and note that again let me first write the euler Lag lagrange equation and then it is easier to see how it simplifies okay we see that where where f in this case f is the integrand 1 plus y prime square. We see that f is independent of y, f is only a function of y prime, which means I can in this particular case, I can certainly for certain say that this partial derivative of f with respect to y is 0, because there is no y appearing in this function. right? So, now my Euler Lagrange equation reduces to the following equation d d x of del del y prime of square root 1 plus y prime square right and this set equal to 0. So, or if we integrate this expression with respect to x we see that we see that what we get is del del y prime of 1 plus y prime square is equal to a constant and this is also once we differentiate this particular expression with respect to y prime we see that this is y prime divided by 1 plus y prime square right so after taking the necessary derivative we see that this is also equal to the same constant let us denote it by c so after simplifying this expression uh, we come to the conclusion well after solving for y prime we come to the conclusion that y prime comes out to be another constant less let us say c 1 right and then we can integrate this we can integrate this expression to come to the 
result that the function y which is the extremal will be c 1 x plus c 2. Now, students are all familiar that this particular expression, this is the expression for a straight line. right? Now, we know that from the boundary condition, we know that y at 0 is 0 and y at 1 is 1. So, again notice the boundary conditions here and from here we get that the extremal y of x is given to be equal to x. So, the geodesics on a plane come out to be a straight line and with the necessary boundary condition, we can eliminate all the involved constants to come at a particular solution to the problem. Okay. So, then let us now, uh, so, so right now we have shown that the extremal is a straight line, we have not mentioned anything whether this extremal is maximum or minimum. We will later on show, we will later show that this is a minimum, this is a minimum of the problem when we talk about the sufficient conditions of, of uh, the functional for finding the extremal of the functional. Okay. So, then let us look at another example. We are given again let us fix the boundary points, let us say x 0 y 0 is 0 0 and x 1 y 1 is 1 1 and we have to find the extremal, we have to find the extremal of the functional j of y which is integral from 0 to 1 y prime square minus y square plus 2 x y d x. Right? Okay. So, then again we use Euler Lagrange and when we use Euler Lagrange equation, we see that this is d d x of del f del y prime minus del y del del f del y which is also equal to d d x of 2 y prime, I am taking the all the necessary derivatives here minus of minus 2 y plus 2 x and we set this equal to 0 via through the Euler Lagrange and we see that the equation that we reduce to is the following linear O d e y prime y double prime plus y is equal to x right and this particular o d e has this is a non homogeneous o d e the homogeneous solution to this o d e will be a linear combination of cos and sin and so i am directly using some of the results of the solution to o d e s the particular solution to this problem will be y particular will be equal to x right and then we can combine to get the the extremal of this sol this functional this is c1 cos x plus c2 sin x the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution right okay so from here all i have to do is to eliminate these constants by using the boundary conditions that we have so, in particular I know that y of 0 is 0 and y of 1 is 1 and that leads to the fact that I get the first constant c 1 is 0 and c 2 comes out to be negative 1 by sin of 1. So, I get a particular extremal out of the family of extremals. Okay. So, that is how we do a typical simple case study of uh, finding the extremal to any functional. Let us quickly wrap up this lecture by giving another quick example. Uh, let us say I have a constant k, so k is a positive constant and j is a functional which is given to be integral from 0 to pi y prime square minus k of y square dx with end points y of 0 equal to y of pi is equal to 0. right? So, we have to find 
the extremal we have to find the extremal to this problem right so so the again to find the extremal all i have to do is to is to you know plug the integrand in the euler lagrange equation and solve it right so the extremal the extremal y is such that it must satisfy the euler lagrange ddx of again i am just plugging in the necessary derivatives i am taking the derivatives right away plus 2k y so students can do all the steps here so i am simplifying few steps so this is my euler lagrange equation okay so once we further simplify this ode we see that this reduces to y double prime plus k y is equal to 0 and i know since this is a homogeneous ode the solution will be a linear combination of cos and sin right and further we know that we are further given these boundary conditions what we have is it turns out that there are two cases for this if suppose i have that square root of k is not an integer my boundary condition will lead to only one solution y of x is identically zero students can check that this is the only condition satisfying the boundary conditions here and the second case that i have is that if k is an integer it is an integer then then the only solution that i get is y is c2 sin of square root kx right so i have infinitely many solutions in this case depending on the value c2 right okay so that that wraps up our discussion in this lecture and in the next lecture i am going to talk about further several cases of euler lagrange equations and in particular i am going to do four case studies or four specific cases of the solution to the euler lagrange equations thank you very much for listening thanks a lot